Hey, well, it is great to be opening this session. Uh, and I got the easy ones to define, which is very, very nice. So I'm Johnny. I'm a postdoc currently based in London in the UK. I'm also a member of IGDOR, which we'll come back to. And I host uh, and produce a podcast which is focused on preprints, open science, uh, and early career researchers, really. You can find me in various places. You can email me, you can find me on Twitter, or I have a website you can go to and follow me through there if you want to. So what is open science? Well, open science is basically just the collective name for an entire movement, which is why it's the easy one to talk about. And it really encompasses many of the things you're about to hear about in the rest of this session. So Wikipedia had quite a nice little definition, so I stole that. So open science is really the movement to make scientific research accessible to everyone. And that's not just other researchers. It really is everyone. It's everyone in society who might want to access any kind of scientific output. But it's also about making science transparent. And that's a really, really important part of it, especially within the research community. And it kind of comes back to what Brian was just talking about in terms of trust. And this is a little nice diagram to kind of show you just how big and expansive open science is as a concept. So it really does go everywhere from sort of the, the tools and the infrastructure we need to do open science, right through the, the sort of basic things like just access to a scientific paper. Um, and, you know, access is kind of my area in particular, but it's a really big expansive field now. And all these things are coming along and developing at different rates. It's kind of exciting to see where this is going to go. When you're looking at open science, one of the things you might see is this little kind of four pillars idea here. And this is really the idea that open science is built on these four core structures, open knowledge, open infrastructures, open communication, and the open engagement of societal actors. And this is, I'm going to break this down a little bit, but open engagement of science uh, of societal actors is very much about citizen science and it's about getting people who are not necessarily researchers involved in research and the process of doing research open communication is quite an expansive topic and this is everything from how we share results to also just discussing the results and again you can link those two very nicely together to bring those two things and getting the you know patient groups for example so i am a biomedical researcher It'd be really nice to get patient and their opinions. None of this is possible without a good, solid infrastructure. And the open infrastructure is not just about having things in place that allow us to do things. So, for example, having a preprint server that lets you post a preprint. It's also about making those infrastructures themselves open. Um, so, Europe PMC, for example, is a platform that allows us to put a lot of research out there, but it's built on open code. And so it's accessible to everyone and people can build on that and use it for their own purposes if they want to. And then open knowledge is, as it says, it's about making knowledge as open as we can. And that isn't just a final product. It's also at the very beginning, like Brian was saying with registered reports, it's about sharing ideas when we have them and getting input as soon as we can, which is a really important aspect to doing good science. And it's one of the ones that I think culturally within science is quite hard to change because we're all a bit protective and scared of being scooped. And like I said, th this whole thing requires a huge infrastructure around it. I'm not going to go into this diagram, um, but you can see it just breaks it down a little bit further. So, for example, on the infrastructure side, you've got a virtual infrastructure, but you also <clears> have this <throat> physical infrastructure. You've got you know, data centers that you need in place. And so it, it's a huge collective effort that involves a lot of different stakeholders and different people. And like I said, really, really exciting to see where this is going. So who, who benefits from this? Why should we promote open science? So there's still sort of three key stakeholders you can break down. So there's benefits to the research landscape. So this is in things like people actually being able to find your results and use your results. Or one of the big ones that open science really does here is it allows researchers in developing countries to access your work and be more involved in the scientific uh, endeavor because a lot of science is very Western focused and open science breaks down a lot of those barriers there are also benefits to wider society so 
the public can access your findings, the public can start to get involved with how we do research. But it also comes down to grants and funding bodies, so taxpayers get better value for money. Um, I'm sure a lot of the people here will be very aware of how broken the current academic publishing system is. Open Science really does a lot of effort into breaking that down and making things fairer and, in my opinion, how they should be. And then you also, as a researcher, get a lot of benefits. So I, I worked with one of the main people behind a lot of the data for this. And it's really cool the kind of benefits you get just from making your work open. You get more exposure. You get higher citation rates. More people use your work just because they can access it. And you also get to research. Uh, you know, your, your research can influence policy and decision making, which as a scientist is kind of it's the ultimate goal. You want to have a real feasible impact on things. Thank you so much, Johnny. I think we're about at time, so yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, you can find the co the close of Johnny's presentation on the OSF page 